Hey everyone, throughout history, some of the most astonishing and valuable treasures have been uncovered not through meticulous planning, but purely by chance. From ancient artifacts buried beneath the earth for millennia to hidden caches of coins just waiting to be discovered. Join me for the top 15 most amazing discovered treasures. Starting with number 15, the Staffordshire Gold Hoard. Discovered in 2009 near to the village of Harwich in Staffordshire, the Staffordshire Hoard stands as the largest collection of Anglo-Saxon gold and silver metalwork ever found. Comprising nearly 4,600 items and fragments, it boasts a weighty total of 5 kilograms of gold, 1.5 kilograms of silver, and around 3,500 pieces of garnet jewelry. Historian Kat Jarman describes it as a potentially unrivaled collection of early medieval artifacts. The hoard, likely stashed between 650 and 675 CE, offers a glimpse into the craftsmanship of the 6th and 7th centuries. Unearthed in the Kingdom of Mercia, its significance in Anglo-Saxon archaeology is considered beyond important. Notably, the artifacts are predominantly martial, lacking the items associated with female use. The workmanship seen in objects like swords, helmets, is striking, giving the extensive number of individual pieces in the hoard. It was purchased jointly for £3.2 million under the Treasure Act 1996 by the Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery. The hoard owes its discovery to Terry Herbert, a member of the Blockswitch Research and Metal Detecting Club. Herbert stumbled upon gold artifacts while scanning recently plowed farmland near Hammerwich with a metal detector. This chance discovery led to a five-day excavation that unearthed 244 gold objects, prompting further exploration of the site. Number 14. Matthew 25 Gold Coin Hoard In 2013, the Saddle Ridge Hoard made headlines as the largest cache of gold coins ever discovered in the United States. It was found in the western Shasta Cascade region of Northern California. This treasure trove consisted of over 1,400 gold coins, with a face value over $27,000. However, its assessed worth skyrocketed to an impressive $10 million. The coins, ranging from $5 to $20 denominations, dated from 1847 to 1894. The couple behind the find, known as John and Mary, stumbled upon the hoard while walking their dog in their rural property. The exact location has remained a well-guarded secret due to privacy concerns, although it is confirmed to be within 200 miles of the 1849 Gold Rush site. John and Mary, who have chosen to remain anonymous, discovered a rust-covered metal can sticking out of the ground, sparking their curiosity. Before their find, the couple had noticed peculiar features in the area, including an old can hanging from a tree and a distinctive rock they nicknamed Saddle Ridge. These turned out to be markers leading them to the treasure site. Ten steps from the jagged rock, the couple unearthed their can, discovering the gold coins inside. The initial excitement of finding a single gold coin led them to uncover more cans with a total of over 1,427 coins. To protect their discovery, they hid the coins in an old ice chest, buried it under wood, and kept its location confidential. After some research, they reached out to Kagan's, a numismatics firm in Tiburon, California, to represent them in dealing with their valuable find. Number 13. The Shapwick Hoard Unearthed in September 1998 in Shapwick, Somerset, England, the Shapwick Hoard stands a remarkable collection of over 9,200 Roman coins, spanning from 30 BC to 224 AD. This impressive find, discovered by amateur metal detectorists and cousins Kevin and Martin Elliott, not only included the largest number of silver denarii ever found in Britain, but also featured two rare coins previously unknown in the region. The hoard's excavation unveiled its origin and was buried in the corner of a room within an undiscovered Roman building. Further exploration and geophysical surveying revealed the site to be part of a courtyard villa, shedding light on its historical context. Following a treasure inquest in Taunton, the hoard was officially declared a treasure and valued at over 260,000 pounds. Somerset County Museum Services successfully acquired the collection with support from Somerset County Council, the National Heritage Memorial Fund, and other organizations. Today, the Shapwick Hoard finds its home at the Museum of Somerset on the grounds of Taunton Castle. Notable elements within the hoard include 260 coins from the reign of Mark Antony, with over half struck during the rule of Septimus Severus. A fascinating addition was the discovery of two rare coins portraying Mandalia Scantilia, the wife of Didius Julianus, an emperor murdered just four weeks after the coins were minted. The non-Roman coins included three Lycian drachma and one drachma from Caesarea in Cappadocia. This historically rich collection concludes with a coin dating back to 224 CE, leading experts to estimate that the entire hoard represented 10 years' pay for a Roman legionary. The Shapwick Hoard, with its unique findings and historical significance, remains a testament to the hidden treasures waiting to be discovered beneath the soil of England. Number 12. The Dead Sea Copper Scroll 
The Copper Scroll, a specific member of the Dead Sea Scrolls discovered in Cave Number 3 near Kirbet Qumran, sets itself apart in significant ways. Unlike scrolls composed of parchment or papyrus, this scroll is an anomaly. It's etched on copper mixed with approximately 1% tin, although the metal had oxidized over the centuries, rendering it brittle. Originally, it was a single scroll measuring around 8 feet. These so-called scrolls of copper were later identified as two separate sections. In contrast to the literary nature of other scrolls, the Copper Scroll is not a work of literature, but rather a practical inventory, listing 64 locations where various gold and silver items were buried. Noteworthy distinctions include its Hebrew language, closer to Mishnaic Hebrew than the literary Hebrew of its counterparts, unique orthography, paleography, or letter forms, and a date ranging from approximately 50 to 100 CE, potentially overlapping with the latest Qumran manuscripts. It was discovered on March 14, 1952, at the back of Cave No. 3 in Qumran. It marked the conclusion of 15 scrolls found in the cave, hence its designation as 3Q15. Due to its corroded state, traditional methods couldn't unroll the scroll, prompting the Jordanian government to send it to Manchester University's College of Technology in England. On the recommendation of archaeologist John Marco Allegro, the sheets were cut into 23 strips by Professor H. Wright Baker in 1955 and 1956, revealing the interconnected nature of the scrolls. Allegro promptly transcribed its contents, with the treasure mentioned in the scroll assumed to be associated with the Jewish temple, particularly the Second Temple. Number 11. The Panagurish Treasure the Panagurish Treasure, a collection of exquisite gold vessels that hails from Panagurish, situated in the southern Bulgarian province of Parzarjik. It was unearthed serendipitously in 1949. This treasure, dating between the late 4th and early 3rd century BC, represents the craftsmanship of the Thracian civilization. It's renowned for both its abundance of gold and fine artistry. This treasure has three official replicas displayed at prestigious museums in Sofia, Plodiv, and Panagurishte while the originals are securely stored in a bank vault due to their priceless nature. The discovery unfolded when three brothers, Pavel, Petko, and Mikhail Dikov, stumbled upon the treasure while digging for clay in a ceramic factory yard. The yellowish objects they encountered, initially dismissed as brass instruments, turned out to be an exceptional collection of gold vessels. The find's curiosity drew a crowd, and the objects were even attempted to be played as musical instruments before their true value was recognized. One version suggests that the brothers, thinking the objects were merely brass instruments left by gypsies, initially disregarded them. In contrast, archaeologist Petar Gorbanov, unconvinced of this explanation, recognized their historical significance. The objects, cleaned in a river, were eventually showcased, leading to an announcement of the discovery in Sofia and Plodiv. Plodiv became the permanent home for this treasure after the director of its archaeological museum collected it promptly. Over the years, the treasure embarked on several global tours, making stops in Rome, Paris, and Munich, and in 1972 it took center stage in Sofia's Thracian art exhibit, coinciding with the first International Congress of Thracology. The exhibition continued its global journey, reaching Japan, the United States, Finland, Sweden, Italy, Belgium, and offering the world a glimpse into Bulgaria's lesser-known Thracian heritage. Number 10. The Antikythera Mechanism the Antikythera Mechanism, an ancient Greek hand-powered orrery, often hailed as the oldest known analog computer, held the secrets of predicting astronomical positions and eclipses decades in advance. Discovered in 1901 by Captain Dimitrios Kantos and a team of sponge divers off the coast of Antikythera Island in Greece, this mechanism emerged from the Mediterranean as a single encrusted piece. The Hellenic Royal Navy's expedition retrieved not only the mechanism, but also a trove of artifacts from a Roman cargo shipwreck, including statues, pottery, glassware, jewelry, and coins. Archaeologist Valerio Stasis's discovery of a gear wheel embedded in a piece of rock in 1902 ignited interest, initially deemed as an astronomical clock, but later considered too advanced for its presumed era. Albert Rem, a German philosopher, proposed it as an astronomical calculator. Interest dwindled until 1951, when a Yale University professor revived investigations. In collaboration with a Greek nuclear physicist, Price conducted X-ray and gamma-ray images in 1971, publishing their findings in 1974. Despite a lapse in inquiry, subsequent searches in 2012 and 2015 at the Antikythera Rex site revealed more art objects and a second ship, possibly linked to the treasure ship housing the mechanism. Among the finds was a bronze disc adorned with a bull image, initially speculated as a cogwheel of the Antikythera mechanism. However, evidence does suggest that it may have served as a decorative element on furniture rather than a part of the intricate device. Number 9. The Nebra Sky Disc 
The Nebra Sky Disc, a bronze artifact with a diameter of approximately 12 inches and a weight of 4.9 pounds, showcases a distinctive blue-green patina and intricate gold inlays, adorned with symbols interpreted as the sun or full moon, a lunar crescent and stars, including a cluster of seven stars associated with the Pleiades. The disc also features golden arcs believed to mark the angle between the solstices. Another arc at the bottom adorned with internal parallel lines is commonly interpreted as a solar boat with numerous oars, though alternative suggestions include a rainbow, the aurora borealis, a comet, or a sickle. Discovered buried underneath Mittelberg Hill near Nebra in Germany, the disc is dated by archaeologists to approximately 1800 to 1600 BCE, belonging to the early Bronze Age culture. Scientific analysis of the disc and accompanying items and the site confirm its early Bronze Age origins, and it represents the world's oldest concrete depiction of astronomical phenomena. In 2013, the Sky Disc earned a place in the UNESCO Memory of the World Register, recognized as one of the most significant archaeological finds of the 20th century. Found in 1999 by unauthorized treasure hunters Henry Westfall and Mario Renner, along with two bronze swords, axe remains, a chisel, and fragments of a spiral armband, the disc eventually made its way to the State Museum of Prehistory. Following a sting operation led by state archaeologist Harold Meller in 2002, positioned so that the sun appears to set behind the Brocken, the highest peak of the Harz Mountains during the summer solstice, the Nebra Sky Disc's unique location and celestial alignment contributes to its significance in understanding ancient astronomical observations. The treasure hunters claim to have found the artifacts within a pit inside the enclosure's bank and a ditch structure. Number 8. Oak Island Money Pit Oak Island, situated in Lundberg County on Nova Scotia's south shore, stands as a mysterious enclave with a rich history of treasure hunting and mysterious tales. Connected to the mainland by a causeway, this tree-shrouded island has long captured imaginations, drawing adventurers and explorers in pursuit of fabled treasures or historical relics. The narrative of Oak Island is steeped in attempts dating back to the 18th century to unveil the secrets hidden beneath its surface. Theories about the island's artifacts span a wide spectrum, from the prospect of pirate treasures to the elusive Shakespearean manuscripts, and even the legendary Holy Grail or the Ark of the Covenant. Among these theories, the tantalizing notion persists that the Knights Templar buried the Grail and the Ark on the island. Over the years, various items have emerged, some subjected to carbon dating, revealing their ancient origins. Despite these findings, no central treasure site of significant magnitude has ever been discovered. The site, marked by multiple excavations, is known as the Money Pit and reflects the collective efforts of diverse individuals and groups. The most renowned discovery story dates to 1799, when Daniel McGuinness unearthed a depression while seeking farmland. Believing it aligned with Captain Kidd's tale, he enlisted the help of John Smith and Anthony Vaughn, uncovering flagstones and oak platforms at intervals. However, the excavation halted at 30 feet due to superstitious dread. In 2006, Michigan-based brothers Rick and Marty Lagina acquired 50% of Oak Island Tours, reigniting the quest for treasure. The Laginas, in collaboration with Blankenship, aimed to unravel the island's mystery. Obtaining a treasure trove license from Nova Scotia authorities in 2010, they resumed activities until December 31, 2010, when the license was replaced with the Oak Island Treasure Act. Moving on to number 7, the Gnostic Gospels. The Nag Hammadi Library, often referred to as the Chenboskian Manuscripts and the Gnostic Gospels, stand as a treasure trove of early Christian and Gnostic texts, on earth near the town of Nag Hammadi in Upper Egypt, 1945. This remarkable discovery made by a local farmer named Muhammad al-Saman consisted of 13 leather-bound papyrus codices concealed within a sealed jar. The contents of these codices inscribed in the Coptic language comprise 52 treatises, predominantly of a Gnostic nature. Additionally, three works from the Corpus Hermeticum, a partial translation or alteration of Plato's Republic, were included in this eclectic collection. This gospel, attributed to Jesus, had fragments discovered earlier at Oxyrhynchus in 1898. Scholars estimate its written text to the second century, based on much earlier sources. The Nag Hammadi's journey to the forefront of academic attention began in 1946, with Jean Duress's meticulous inquiries from 1947 to 1950. The discovery site near the Sixth Dynasty tombs was initially reported by a local farmer who spoke of a complex narrative involving blood feuds, cannibalism, and the superstitions about a jinn. After the discovery, these codex underwent various trajectories. Most came into the possession of Fokion Jetanos, an antiques dealer in Cairo. 
ultimately being retained by the Department of Antiquities. The revolution in 1952 led to their placement in the Coptic Museum in Cairo as national property. Meanwhile, a single codex known as the Jum Codex was sold to a Belgian antiques dealer, creating ownership disputes until it was finally handed over to the Coptic Museum in 1975. Number 6. The U.S. Declaration of Independence in a surprising turn of historical discovery, two Harvard University researchers, Professor Danielle Allen and researcher Emily Sneff, have uncovered a parchment copy of the Declaration of Independence, known as the Sussex Declaration. This finding is really significant, as it's only the second known parchment manuscript copy of the Declaration, the first being housed in the National Archives in Washington, D.C. The journey to this discovery began when Sneff stumbled upon a listing for the parchment copy at West Sussex Record Office in Southern England. Intrigued by the mention of parchment, a material suggesting a special occasion document, she reached out to the office skeptically but with growing excitement as she delved into the details. The manuscript had been in the possession of the West Sussex Record Office since 1956, acquired from a local man associated with a law firm representing the Dukes of Richmond. Though British officials had not closely examined it before, Allen and Sneff found distinctive features that set it apart, making it a unique and mysterious document. Analyzing handwriting, spelling errors, parchment styles, and preparation, the researchers determined that the manuscript dated back to the 1780s, likely produced in America, specifically New York or Philadelphia. The next challenge was identifying the individual behind the parchment, and the leading candidate appears to be James Wilson, a Pennsylvania delegate to the Continental Congress, signer of both the Declaration and Constitution, and an original Supreme Court Justice. The researchers also found a notable anomaly in the Sussex copy, scrambled names of signers, unlike the group signatures by states seen in other copies. Allen and Sneff proposed that this deliberate disorder was symbolic, representing a nationalist argument that the United States was founded by equal citizens, rather than a loose confederation of states. The choice of James Wilson as the likely creator of the Sussex Declaration is based on his repeated invocation of the Declaration, with the belief that it was signed by a united community, rather than enumerated by states. Wilson's influence in American history may have been more substantial than traditionally recognized, according to these researchers. While scholars find the evidence of the manuscript's American origin persuasive and the Wilson hypothesis plausible, uncertainties do remain. The intentional disorder of signatures is seen as a fascinating aspect of the discovery, emphasizing the contested nature of these documents during a critical period in American history. Number 5. The Hoxney Horde the Hoxney Hoard is a remarkable archaeological discovery and the largest hoard of late Roman silver and gold found in Britain, encompassing the largest collection of gold and silver coins from the 4th and 5th centuries. The hoard, discovered in 1992 by Eric Laws, a metal detectorist in the village of Hoxney in Suffolk, England, comprises over 14,800 Roman gold, silver, and bronze coins, along with approximately 200 items of silver tableware and gold jewelry. Eric Laws stumbled upon the hoard while assisting his friend Peter Watling, a tenant farmer who had lost a hammer in a farm field south of Hockney. Laws, using a metal detector, discovered silver spoons, gold jewelry, and numerous gold and silver coins. After retrieving a few items, Laws and Watling promptly notified the landowners and the police without attempting further excavation. The following day, a team of archaeologists from the Suffolk Archaeological Unit conducted an emergency excavation of the site. The hoard was concentrated within the decayed remains of a wooden chest, and the objects being carefully arranged inside. The excavated hoard was then transported to the British Museum, and its discovery was publicized when leaked to the press, particularly the Sun newspaper. Despite the unknown value of the hoard at that point, the newspaper claimed it was worth about 10 million pounds, and to manage the unexpected publicity, the British Museum organized a press conference to announce the discovery and subsequently undertook sorting, cleaning, and stabilization of the hoard. The Treasure Valuation Committee assessed the hoard's value at over 1.7 million pounds in 1993. The Hoxney Hoard it remains a significant archaeological find, shedding light on the wealth, craftsmanship, and historical context of the late Roman period in Britain. Additionally, the investigation uncovered a series of late Bronze Age or early Iron Age post holes that were interpreted as potential structural elements of a past settlement. Number 4. Crosby Garrett Helmet the Crosby Garrett Helmet, an extraordinary artifact hailing from the late 2nd or early 3rd century AD, stands as a testament to the rich tapestry of Roman history. 
Discovered in May of 2010 near Crosby Garrett in Cumbria, England, the helmet, crafted from copper alloy, was found folded within an artificial stone structure. Its unearthing was attributed to an anonymous metal detectorist in his 20s from Peterley County, Durham, who had been scanning the adjacent fields with his father. The fine spot, intriguingly close to a Roman road, hinted at a potential connection to the Roman cavalry. The helmet's design, with facial features reminiscent of helmets found in southern Europe, suggested a deliberate nod to Roman cavalry tournaments, reenacting the Trojans' legendary exploits. The intricate details and symbolic nuances embedded in the helmet make it a fascinating glimpse into the cultural and artistic expressions of the time. Excavations in the vicinity, sponsored by the Tully House Museum and Art Gallery and the Portable Antiquities Scheme, reveal the Romano-British farming settlement. Now, this connection to local life does raise questions about whether the helmet's owner was a resident who had served in the Roman cavalry, contributing to a more nuanced understanding of the interplay between Roman occupation and local communities. The helmet, composed of 33 large and 34 small fragments, was auctioned at Christie's in October 2010 for $3.6 million U.S. Tully House Museum sought to acquire the helmet with the backing of the British Museum, but was outbid by an undisclosed private buyer. Since then, the Crosby Garrett helmet has made public appearances at notable exhibitions, including the Royal Academy of Arts and the British Museum, offering enthusiasts and scholars the opportunity to marvel at this remarkable piece of Roman history. Number 3. Picasso Collection a remarkable discovery of over 270 works by Pablo Picasso, created during his most prolific period from 1900 to 1932, has been unearthed in the home of a retired French electrician. The collection includes paintings, drawings, sketches, lithographs, and nine cubist collages, estimated to be worth at over 40 million euros. French art experts examining the pieces for almost three months have confirmed their authenticity. The story of how these masterpieces resurface is as sensational as the find itself, prompting a police investigation into their disappearance and concealment for nearly four decades. The tale began on September 9th, when an elderly man, Pierre Le Guenic, accompanied by his wife, visited the Picasso administration in Paris. Le Guenic claimed to have over 175 works by Picasso in his possession, presenting them in an unremarkable suitcase. Initially skeptical, the late painter's son, Claude Picasso, and art experts were astounded when many of the pieces were found to carry a numbering system known only to Picasso himself. The collection spans the period from Picasso's arrival in France in 1900, marked by poverty and desperation, to the early 1930s when he gained recognition as a leading 20th century artist. Among the newfound treasures are valuable cubist collages, paintings from Picasso's celebrated Blue Period, drawings, models for significant work, and portraits of his first wife, Olga Koklova. Some works, such as fragile cubist collages, were thought to have been lost when Picasso's studio was flooded, while others, including watercolors from his Blue Period and lithographs, were entirely unknown. Legenic, claiming Picasso and his wife gave him these works in the three years leading up to the artist's deaths in 1973, explained that the gifts were bestowed as a token of appreciation. The full extent of this apparent generosity came to light when police raided Legenic's home in October, discovering a total of 271 items. Although taken into custody, Legenic has not been charged with a crime. The Picasso family has initiated legal action against unknown individuals for receiving stolen goods. Friends and family of Picasso find Legenic's story implausible, as Picasso was known to be extremely protective of his works. Claude Picasso highlighted the discrepancy in Legenic's tale, emphasizing that Picasso systematically dated and documented his creations, making it highly unlikely that he would have given away so many pieces in one go. The six family members inheriting Picasso's estate are pursuing legal action for receipt of stolen goods, and the French Office to Prevent Trafficking of Cultural Works is conducting an investigation. While the collection is unlikely to be put up for sale, its discovery has been deemed historically significant and fascinating by experts from Sotheby's and Christie's in Paris. Number 2. The Schroda Treasure the Schroda treasure, discovered during renovation work in the Silesian town in Poland between 1985 and 1988, stands a remarkable hoard of silver and gold coinage, gold jewelry, royal regalia, and precious stones. The over 3,000 artifacts dating from the mid-14th century are currently housed at the National Museum in Poland and displayed at the Regional Museum in Schroda Śląska. The uncovering of gold and silver coins commenced on June 8, 1985, during the demolition of a building for a local telephone exchange. 
The original find, a vase filled with around 3,000 Prague Groschen, were secured by authorities. However, a lack of any archaeological study accompanied this discovery. Three years later, on May 24, 1988, during another demolition in the vicinity of the first find, a more extensive discovery was reported, including silver and gold florin coins. Archaeologists commenced an investigation, leading to a governmental plan to repurchase looted items. A subsequent criminal investigation aimed to recover items still in the hands of those who had taken them. Although many items were eventually recovered, some artifacts do remain missing. The treasure's origin have been subject of speculation over the years, with museums and wealthy individuals vying for its pieces. The consensus is that the treasure once belonged to King Charles IV of House of Luxembourg, who in 1348 pawned items to a banker in Schrodup to fund his claim to the title of King of the Romans. The town, then part of the Duchy of Roklo, or Breslau, came under the rule of Bohemian kings in 1335, and the treasure was never reclaimed and remained hidden. Various items from the treasure have been catalogued and restored, with displays dating back to 1985. Most items have been distributed among museums in Lower Silesia since 1995 to 97, and the collection is predominantly exhibited in a local museum, while some items have been showcased in other museums. The treasure's value is challenging to quantify, with estimates ranging from 50 to 100 million dollars. Notable elements include a gold woman's crown, likely belonging to Blanche of Valois, the first wife of Emperor Charles IV, medieval gold pendants, a gold clasp adorned with precious stones, rings with intricate designs, gold coins, and thousands of silver coins. Number 1. The Frome Hoard in 2010, a thrilling archaeological discovery unfolded near Frome in Somerset, England, as metal detectorist Dave Crisp stumbled upon the monumental Frome hoard. A cache of over 52,000 Roman coins dating from AD 253 to 305 lay concealed in a ceramic pot with 45 centimeter diameter. What set this hoard apart was its historical significance, featuring the largest collection of coins ever found from the era of Carassius, who boldly ruled Britain independently from 286 to 293, being the first Roman emperor to mint coins on British soil. Crisp's journey to this remarkable find began on April 11, 2010, during a routine metal-detecting session in a field where he had previously uncovered late Roman silver coins. In the pursuit of additional relics, Crisp received a peculiar signal. Digging down about 35 centimeters, he unearthed a small, radiant coin and the pot's top. Realizing the potential magnitude of the discovery, he carefully filled the hole, marking a pivotal moment in his two-decade metal-detecting venture. A swift response followed. The Portable Antiquities Scheme finds liaison officer for Wiltshire, Katie Hins. Subsequent emergency excavation led by archaeologist Alan Graham spanned three days from April 23rd to 25, 2010. The meticulous process uncovered the pot's pit and its surroundings, revealing a small black burnished wear bowl forming a lid over the pot. Following the hoard's extraction, an archaeological geophysics team probed the surrounding area, but no signs of settlement emerged. The Museum of Somerset and Taunton secured the hoard in 2011 with a grant from the National Heritage Memorial Fund, marking an exciting chapter in British archaeological history. The coins ranging from 253 to 305 AD include notable percentage minted during Carassius's reign. The hoard's significance extends further with the inclusion of five silver denarii from Carassius, the sole silver coin struck by the entire Roman Empire during that period. The meticulous conservation process undertaken by the British Museum and the identification of over 44,000 coins promise continued revelations from this extraordinary find. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.